because they haven't succeeded in getting the guns out of the hands of the American people, nor have they succeeded in taking our freedoms away. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. Bill, Bill heard the commotion out here, just the ruckus, because the noise that comes up the road being so rough and stuff. He, he assumed, I guess, that it was typical high school partiers, because they leave their trash and stuff out, and the local property owners all around us had come to us and asked us to run them off, because they were destroying gates and fences. Um, he came out, got in his truck. Uh, his truck was always parked right out in front of the house there, right past the driveway. He would park just in front of the lawn, always normally face that direction. And uh, he whipped around the cul-de-sac, I would have to assume, because that's what always took place. And he then proceeded down the, this cul-de-sac here, which is uh, Clearview Circle Drive. He's 96 Clearview Circle Drive. That's on the county register. He came down here, and then at that point, he came down to go to this other end of the, of the street, which is right down there. You can see the sign in the gate. Okay, that's where they parked, and that was real common for the high school children and people making noise and throwing trash around and stuff to do. They would park down there. That particular owner owns the rest of the 40 acres down there, and he was particularly perturbed because they would vandalize his fences and cattle troughs. cul-de-sac here where the truck was parked it was unmarked no one was in uniforms they did not identify themselves that was it they said that in their briefings the very next day uh, they were parked here they intentionally had a vehicle with an incredibly loud stereo system and they made a lot of noise themselves you know hooting and hollering uh, Bill came down and told them this is based on the law enforcement people that told me this that were involved that night Bill told them if they didn't leave, he was calling the police, and they shunned him on. So he, he then turned around to go back to his home up there and call the police. Now, at that point, they were here, and he just basically turned right there, just out on this lot a little bit, and went on back. Right here out of this juniper was a spot I was told by law enforcement officials that uh, the first deputy came out right at... Bill's truck, because he was cruising along slow, watching them more than likely in his rearview mirror, me knowing him very well, uh, to make sure they didn't follow him back over there. He came out, and this is the point where Bill knocked him off sheerly with his arm, not ran over anything. Uh, that guy basically just landed on his butt, because Bill hit it, hit the gas. So he, had, he made this little curve here, and this is where he stopped. At this point, according to law enforcement officials, from their briefing and then plus people on site right then. When he stopped, one more person approached the vehicle, but not running. And that's when he did the open hands thing and a sign of, you know, like surrender, or whatever. Here's where he hit up on the bank, just trying to get avoid the vehicle 
that then came shooting up here, full bore, full speed, came ripping up the hill. So obviously the people at the end had communications with people down there on the road. Must have verified the bill. I turned around coming back to his house. So they came zooming up here in a vehicle. He's avoiding them. He comes up on this bank. It was testified as that by the uh, law enforcement reports as well as the evidence on his vehicle that that is what happened. The exhaust system was tore off the bottom. He then proceeded right there past the small elms and the driveway to the front of his yard. I was told by the law enforcement officials that were on site and ones that had to come up afterwards and get a briefing so they knew what went on roughly because public was obviously going to be coming to try to come up here and news crews and all whatnot. They had put out that Bill is not to be let to that house, let back in that house alive. It was premeditated. It was put out Bill will not be allowed back in alive. Right here at Bill's home is where he pulled up. Uh, his front of this vehicle would be towards me. Uh, the other vehicle was parked with his the front towards the other end of the street. Um, Bill ran around the back of his vehicle, which would be towards the driveway. He then proceeded across his yard. This is when the shooting began, according to their reports. The vehicle that was parked here besides his, his truck, which was pointed that way, he had bought for Jessica, his daughter, and then she didn't want it, so it was just sitting here. Uh, Sheriff Goldsmith was ran around the back of it, which would be towards me, and got on this street side to use the vehicle as protection. At that point, Bill is approximately halfway in the yard and still running with his back towards him. They claim at that point he began shooting, which was with his right arm just thrown backward, haphazardly pulling the trigger of a 38 snub nose Smith & Wesson. Uh, from where we're standing would be essentially the angle that Goldsmith would have been standing, but closer. Uh, Marina's would have been by the 58 Chevy, which would be equivalent to that truck, but backed all, but up all the way to the wall. Uh, next to that end post of the front porch, uh, Bill was supposedly shooting backwards like this, which would be back towards the street in reality, that direction. When he hit marinas, that angle does not work at all. Plus, the bullet hole in the glass of the 58 Chevy indicates a bullet path of approximately this direction through the driver's roll-down window and out the passenger corner of the windshield, indicating clearly it went towards the dome in town, which is the high school field for playing during the winter. Um, at that point, Goldsmith opened fire. Uh, hitting Bill several times. Bill fell down right where the porch would start and the dirt would meet the concrete sidewalk next to the planter you can just slightly see raised on this side favoring me from the front door. That's where he fell and uh, according to them they quit shooting and he was dead. An Apache County Sheriff's deputy is in the hospital after being shot in the head by a so-called militia member. Now what we know is that that militia member is dead. Our Gary Harper has the very latest on what's going on with that story. Gary? Marty Scott, this all happened in a little town called Eager, Arizona, which is just on the eastern side of the state of Arizona. It's almost on the border of New Mexico. This is what we know so far. Sheriff's deputies, we understand, were trying to serve some type of arrest warrant on a man by the name of William Cooper. He's also known as Bill Cooper. He reportedly has been known to be hostile toward law enforcement, so sheriff's deputies apparently disguised themselves as a bunch of rowdy teenagers in the back of a pickup truck in hopes of luring Cooper out, and it apparently worked. However, when Cooper realized what was happening, he reportedly pulled a gun and shot a 40-year-old deputy in the head. During the gunfight, Cooper 
himself was shot and he was killed.